Water has been on the minds of Albertans for a while now, and it's what we've been talking about for months. That's kind of what happens when you have a major water feeder main break, which leads to tough water restrictions and water conservation measures for weeks. This crisis on the backs of the drought has highlighted our vulnerability to water supply. All of us have come in direct contact with our water usage lately, and that's really what's happened, right? Normally, we just turn on the tap and we don't even think about it. For years, climate scientists have been warning about water scarcity in Alberta. And you add a rapidly growing population to the mix, and it means that the province's water supply is being pushed to limits that it hasn't seen before. And as they say, desperate times call for desperate measures. On the coast, you have two options, which is desalination or water recycling, but in interior areas like Alberta, Calgary area, you really then only have one new option left, which is water recycling. Alberta is not alone in this. Several jurisdictions across North America have looked into the concept of reusing water. It's more common in some U.S. states like California, and it's an option when old-fashioned ways of securing water are no longer sufficient. In Orange County, California, there's one method in particular that they've bought into. Sewage is actually becoming the secret weapon in the climate-driven water crisis around the world, especially in North America. Yeah, he said sewage. And if your stomach turned, you're probably not alone. But here's the thing. Orange County is part of a semi-arid part of California, and they frequently are facing water scarcity challenges, much like Alberta. And so the state decided they couldn't rely on their traditional sources of water, and they had to look to alternatives. And that's where wastewater entered the picture. We want to diversify our water portfolio just like you would your investments. We, don't, we were too reliant upon this local river source and imported water, and they were so variable when we had these really heavy drought cycles, especially in the starting in the 2010s all the way up until three years ago in Southern California. It was really bad. So this gives us another source of water. And now they're saying, hey, this is a resource. Let's not think of it as a waste, it's a resource. And we have this advanced technology now, like microfiltration, reverse osmosis, advanced oxidation, that we can produce water that's even beyond drinking water quality. This process now makes up around 40% of the county's drinking water. There's commonality there, right? Like you have a, a water scarcity issue this is a potential solution. I mean, it is something that you can implement and then it doesn't have to be run at the same level, right? If, if, if for some reason the, the climate changes and you're, start, you're back to getting heavier than normal precipitation, then this is just, you know, a smaller component. As questions around water scarcity loom in Alberta, some experts suggest additional reuse could be part of the solution. And there are already some notable water reuse projects that already exist in the province. We're out at the uh, wastewater treatment lagoons for the town of Crossfield. On that side, there's four anaerobic cells. So that's where the water comes through and it circulates through the four ponds. And then it's eventually dumped into this, which is called our faculative pond. It'll stay in this pond for about 45 days doing treatment. And then it, from there, it's pumped over to our effluent storage cell. It sits there for about a year. And then from there, then it's released or uh, sent to the golf course for irrigation or to the farmland for irrigation and, or else to fracking companies. Small towns like Crossfield have a responsibility to properly dispose of their wastewater. For years, they treated their wastewater and, under provincial oversight, released it into the creek at certain times of the year but now they've found another solution. So far, we've sold $30,000 worth of effluent. We're very limited as municipalities to be able to get revenues and different types of revenues in. So this is one way we can do that. So in our minds, it's uh, one of the perfect ways to not only help our situation with wastewater, but also help the environment. It's not just a financial boost for small towns. In Calgary, a major reuse project converts sewage into treated water used for cooling. In a year, this facility will use approximately 6 million cubic meters of reclaimed water. We don't take in any potable water. We knew this area was prone to drought. We did a lot of work with the city of Calgary to try and reduce the amount that we were taking from them. 
so it was an easy win for us. We're actually saving money on the cost of the water coming in. It costs us less to use wastewater than potable water. NMAX's solution is among the chief reuse projects in Alberta. So why aren't more being considered? There are three things that are slowing down adoption of water reuse. The first one is return flow. If you're reusing that water, not as much is going back into the river. And so that, that causes a problem. That's just mass balance. The second one is the issue around health. There's a concern that if you take um, water that may be not fully treated or it's contaminated in some way, that has been the concern. And then the third one is, is the willingness of people to adopt these technologies, sort of the ick factor. Of course, there's always a stigma when you're dealing with raw sewage, but uh, you know, the more we can reuse our water, recycle it, it's a win-win. This was a problem in California too, where Orange County learned from an earlier project in San Diego. That was one of the first big indirect potable reuse projects that got shut down because of negative public comments. What a lot of people are doing now is the outreach is so important. It's like, why do we need to go to this? alternate source of water? Is the technology safe? And even at this cost, why does it still make sense? And be, you know, transparent about it. It is wastewater, treated wastewater. It's being turned into drinking water. And so the big outreach component is the technology's there. But for some people, it's hard to push past the ick factor, which has made water reuse popular fodder for some late night talk shows. I feel about drinking toilet water the way a celebrity who agrees to do Dancing with the Stars feels. <laughs> do you know what I mean? No, I do. I don't want to do it. I'm not proud of it. But I guess I have no other options. The thing is, water reuse already happens. Normally, wastewater ends up in rivers and lakes and oceans and then gets treated into drinking water. These new solutions just speed up the process. That's what all these reuse projects are trying to do. And I think the technology and the regulations finally got to a place where there's acceptance of it. Alberta still has a long way to go before residents have to grapple with the idea of their drinking water coming from treated sewage. But water reuse projects are on the rise and Calgary's recent water crisis does put possible reuse solutions into focus.